Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well, and thank you for joining me on this Zoom call. Today, I have the wonderful Chantal Reyna, and she will shortly introduce herself, but she's someone I highly respect and admire as a lender and as a woman that's empowering the conversations for other women to have their own uh, you know, financial freedom. So, Chantal, thank you for accepting the invite, and could you please... Uh, share about yourself. And yes, I'd love to. Thank you so much for that introduction. That was amazing. And I really appreciate you having me on today. Um, so as Hen said, my name is Chantal. I am with Movement Mortgage. We are a direct lender. So we specialize in mortgage financing. I have been in the mortgage industry way too long. I've been doing this for about 15 years. Um, I bought my first property in my early 20s. And I started to build a real estate portfolio Then the market crashed in 2008. And that was a huge, huge learning experience for me. I was definitely overextended, um, but it was an experience that I would not change. Doing this the second time around, I was much smarter. Um, I approached the market a little bit differently. And I can say that now I have um, some properties that I'm, I'm really thankful for that have definitely set me up for my future. Um, and I mean, I just think that the, the real estate market is an incredible vehicle to be able to build that sort of wealth. And I think that's actually what speaks behind your passion about always teaching people about owning properties and building their own uh, um, finance, free, financial freedom. So for today, I have a question for you. One of the things that I've been getting because of the COVID is how is the real estate market doing? And from us, you know, just your perspective as a lender, are you seeing any difference in the amount of loan applications before COVID, during COVID and now? Yeah, so absolutely. What I will say is that things have shifted on the financing side since all of this has happened. Mm -hmm. So banks have always done a risk assessment, right? They analyze the amount of risk they're taking on when they're extending financing to a buyer. And now they are doing that even more so. So they're taking a step back. They're really looking at the clients specifically. So the bigger banks for sure, that's going to have the tougher requirements, the higher credit scores, the bigger down payments. Um, we're still going with the federal guidelines that have been set by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. That's the foundation. And then the banks have the option to add additional requirements, which are called overlays. Mm -hmm. That allows them to minimize the risk that they're taking on. So have there been changes to financing? Absolutely. But we can still get you into a home with as little as 5% down. We still have options for credit scores in the 600s. Um, as far as what I'm seeing with activity, so the Mortgage Bankers Association released um, some statistics a couple of weeks ago showing that we have seen a rise in purchase loan applications. So this is now the fourth week in a row that that number has gone up. Me personally, I'm having so many more conversations with buyers they're confident, they want to get into the market, and they want to take advantage of the current situation. And I think actually this is a perfect time for buyers that don't have a problem with it, that the job still secure because there is not that many buyers in the market and the competition is, just from my perspective as an agent, even in Culver City, we still have multiple offers, but it's not as many buyers that you're competing against as it was like two months ago. And for sellers that are, I wanted to ask you actually a question because some of my buyers are also sellers and we've been talking a lot about forbearance. What is forbearance? What do you think as a lender uh, forbearance is and how will it affect any future buyer that's right now as a seller? Yeah, so I think that there was a lot of um, misconception when the forbearance came out. So we know that that's part of the CARES Act that the government had put in place that allows you to skip a payment if you've been affected by COVID. What it is not is forgiveness. So you are still responsible for those mortgage payments, whether it's skipping one month, two, or three. Every lender is handling it a little differently, so you'll want to speak to them directly on what it looks like, whether it's making a lump sum payment, 
for tacking it onto the back of the loan or spreading it across the entire loan. Um, but what I really want people to know is that it can impact your ability to get financing moving forward. So whether you're someone that's selling your home, trying to get a new purchase loan, or someone that's looking to refinance, there will be a note on the credit report showing that the loan has been forbearance. And the waiting period right now is 12 months before you can get new financing. So for buyers that, for sellers that are planning to use, you know, get a loan and use the money that they got from the sell, it, this was going to be actually a huge challenge. Right. It's going to be pretty difficult. So unless it's a dire situation, I don't recommend going into forbearance. Everyone's situation is different. And um, I want to be mindful of that. Right. But if you can continue to make your mortgage payments, um, I would definitely recommend doing so. Just do it and find other creative ways, maybe refinance. And the, how are the, ra the rates right now for refinancing? Yeah, so rates are historically at an all-time low. It's a great time to purchase, to refinance. When we're in an uncertain economy like we are right now in a recession, statistically, historically, rates go down. Mm -hmm. So we are expecting that rates will continue to stay low, if not dip a little bit lower. So it's a great opportunity to be able to get into a property with a low payment or refinance your current mortgage into a low payment. Um, so that's definitely something that I would I'd advise taking advantage of. And just to add to that note, one more question, and that will be my last question. <laughs> <laughs> for buyers that are actually on the stand and not wanting to get to the market because they think that the price is going to go low, what do you think? What's your experience with that? As a real estate agent, I haven't seen uh, price reductions that, you know, I know that any property that's well priced so get uh, multiple offers. So from a, a lender, what do you see? Uh, you think the home price is going to go down? It's going to go high? It's going to stay the same? My reason for asking this question is to give the buyer a perspective of whatever concern, if it's, you know, the employment, we just talked about it, if you, and the ability to buy that this is really perfect time because there's not that many competition. But if you're standing and not wanting to take an action because you think the price is going to go low as a lender, what do you see and what do you think? Yeah, so I think that's a valid question. I get asked that often from buyers that I'm, I'm consulting with. Prior to COVID, we had one of the strongest real estate markets we'd ever seen. The median loan to value, which is how much you're borrowing from the bank versus mm -hmm. what the actual value of your property is, is 50%. And here in the state of California, we have a huge percentage of homeowners that own their property free and clear, right. which means that that is going to keep the real estate market stable. It's a strong market. We have very little inventory and we have buyers that want to get out there and buy a home. If you feel like your job is secure, stable, you feel good about it, you have a down payment, this is an incredible opportunity to get into the market and start to build that equity. Will you be competing with other buyers? Yes. In most cases, you absolutely are, but not necessarily as many as at the beginning of the year, which is why I think this is a perfect time to take advantage because now you have a higher percentage of getting into that home. Real estate market is still very strong and you're going to be able to start building that wealth. Rates, again, are historically low, which means it's the cheapest right now to borrow money to get into a property. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for accepting the invite and thank you for having this conversation with me. I look forward to having more in the future. I will find out more questions from my clients and my friends and, uh, you know, we'll have a conversation about different things and different concerns in the home purchase process. So Chantal, thank you so much. I hope you're having a great day. Thank you for accepting my invite again. Thank you.